Yes. Did you wake? Yes, I've been lying here with my eyes open. Something's wrong, isn't it? Shh. Don't wake the children. It's the oxygenator, isn't it? Yes, but that's not all. I thought so. The motor? No, the motor's fine. You can hear it for yourself. It's the generator I'm worried about. What's wrong with it? The fuel tanks. I think the blast shook them and they developed a slow leak. We've been losing fuel steadily for over three months now. Isn't there anything we can do to fix it? You know as well as I do that we can't. They're buried the same as we are. Forty feet away, under twenty feet of earth. Even if I could dig over to them, it wouldn't do any good. The fuel's almost gone. Oh, Ed, what are we going to do? I don't know. How much time do we have left? I don't know. One day, maybe two. Oh, Ed, I'm frightened. And for the children's sake, try not to be. What are we going to do? Try to live today just as if it were any other day. Theater 5 presents A House of Cards. Up, oh, everybody get up. Another day, come on. What, what time is it? It's time to get ready for school. Oh, I don't want to have school again today. I want to go outside and play. Now, Mark, let's not start that again today. Get up and get dressed, Mark. We need somebody to make the egg cycle go. Mother's going to make eggs this morning, and we'll need the extra power for the ventilator. Oh, boy, eggs. Oh, Mary, big deal, eggs. Every day it's the same old thing. Get up, ride the egg cycle, have school, take a nap, read, have more school. Mark? I want to go outside and play. Play? Now, Mark, you know very well why we can't go outside and play. The next thing you know, you'll have Mary all upset. Now, get dressed. We need the egg cycle to make the ventilator go over these eggs. Uh, Daddy... Yesterday, Mark said that the bomb was a hundred megaton that hit us. I did not. I did too. I did not. All right, all right. That's enough. Well, how big was it, Daddy? I don't know. It, it was a hundred megatons, wasn't it, Dad? No. See? On the radio, they said it was a hundred megatons. Let's not talk about the bomb. It's all right, Anne. On the radio, they said it was between 50 and 100. They didn't know for sure. They have no way of knowing did it knock down our house? Yes. And my school? Probably. How about uh, Grandpa and Grandma's house? I don't know. I think not. They're pretty far away. Uh, are Grandpa and Grandma still alive? Yeah. It's all right, Ann. I think they're still alive, Mary. Grandpa's a pretty smart man. He could have gotten them away before the fire got to them. Oh, Mark said there was nobody left alive in the world but us. Mark. I did not. You did too. Now, Mark, I... that was a terrible thing to say. Well, then how come we can't get anything on the radio anymore? Ed, I don't think this is a subject we ought to discuss before breakfast. I think it's better they know the truth when they ask for it, Anne. It's better than guessing about half-truths. Now, there could be any number of reasons why we can't pick up anything on the radio anymore, Mark. Maybe, maybe our antenna was destroyed by the firestorm that followed the blast. Maybe it's covered with radioactive ash. We know that most of the major cities were hit the same time ours was. Now, maybe the smaller cities don't have broadcasting stations powerful enough to reach us. It could be any number of things. But I can assure you of one thing. Somewhere, somehow... There are people left. Is, is my bicycle gone, too? Yes. And, and the swing? Oh, I knew this was going to lead to no good. Now, Mark, you march over to the X cycle and get it going. This place is getting full of smoke. Now, Mary, darling, you wash your face and get out your homework. We're going to study fractions today, and you didn't do too well last time. <laughs> Ed? Yes? The children are asleep now. You gave them a pill? Mm-hmm. And their orange juice. It should be safe to talk now. What are we going to do? I don't know. I've been thinking about it. Couldn't we run for it? What do you mean? 
When the air gives out in here, pick up the children and run. Maybe if we run fast and long enough, maybe we could get out of it. I've thought about that, too. But the circle of radiation may be anywhere from 50 to 100 miles, depending on the size of the bomb and the wind drift. We couldn't make it in a day or two days, even if we ran. Can't we open the ventilators? No, no, it's still too hot out there. The exterior Geiger counter still reads more than 80 wrenches an hour. If we open the exterior ventilator an hour, it'd be as radioactive in here as it is out there. Why has it stayed so hot so long? You said that within three months, it would cool down long enough for us to leave. I thought it would. Well, what's gone wrong? I don't know. Any number of things could have. Maybe we were closer to the blast than we figured we would be. Maybe we're covered with radioactive earth. It could be any number of things. Couldn't we open the door and see? No. No, it's too hot to expose the children to. It could ruin them. Just a crack? I'm afraid not. Oh, I wonder what time it is. Two o'clock. No, I mean, I wonder what time it is outside. About the same. We don't even know what time it is. The day of the week or anything. Yes, we do. I've kept it all marked off on the calendar. Yes, but how many times has the clock stopped? Twice? Three times? Exactly twice. Because you forgot to wind because it. Because we both forgot to wind well, it. Well, I can't do everything. Cook meals on a single burner, keep house and raise two children in a nine by twelve room. Damn. Oh, I'm sorry, Ed. I didn't mean to snap at you that way. I'm just so tired of it all. It seems you try so hard and you never win. You build a fallout shelter to be safe from the bomb, and you have to worry about the firestorms that follow. And so you make it completely self-contained. Water, food, air, enough to last you six months in case the radiation's hotter than you think. Annie. And the blast knocks a fuel line loose, and all your plans go up in the air like a puff of smoke. Oh, Annie. It just isn't fair, Ed. It just isn't and fair. And you've got to control yourself. I'm tired of being in control of myself. It's like a house of cards. You put one in wrong and the whole thing comes tumbling down. Annie, please. It isn't fair. It just isn't Annie. fair. Annie. <laughs> Is that it? Is that the generator? No. No, that's the oxygenator. When the generator goes, everything will go. The lights, water, everything. And we, we've got to make some decisions. Listen... What? Listen. It sounds like digging. There it is. Do you hear it? Yes, I can hear it. Yes, you're right. It is digging. They found us. Somebody's trying to rescue us. Anne, wait. They're here. We're safe. Anne, stay away from that door. But they're here. They found us. And we have no way of knowing who's on the other side of that door. The Geiger counter says it's 80 wrenches an hour out there. A rescue crew wouldn't enter an area this hot even with protective clothing. But who else could it be? I don't know. But whoever it is, we'd better make sure before we let him in. If he's been wandering around long out there, he won't be pretty to look at. He's still at it. Whoever it is, he's kept it up over two hours. Who's out there, Dad? I don't know, Marky, but we're going to find out. Hand me that Geiger counter, son. You're not going out. No, I just want to get a radiation reading in the airlock. Here it is, Dad. Stand back at the table, Ann, and keep Mary behind you. All right. Stand behind your father, Mark. There's a reading of ten just inside the inner door. in here. 10, 20, 40 at the door. That's hot. That means it's in excess of 80 outside. Who's out there, Daddy? I don't know. Let's see if I can make him hear us. There's someone out there, all right. He hears me, but he won't answer. Who do you suppose it is? I don't know. Bill Bigler. What? Bill Bigler from over the next block. He's the only one in our neighborhood that built a fallout shelter besides us. But what would he be doing out there? 
He's got a Geiger counter. He knows it's too hot to be moving around out there. Food. What? Food. They've run out of food. Do you suppose? I know it is. I talked to Alice on the phone the day after they finished their shelter. She asked me how much food we were stocking, and I said enough for six months. Well, she laughed and said they were only stocking for three months. Bill said no radiation would linger beyond that, and if it did, they wouldn't want to come up to see what the world looked like. Could be. This is almost the fourth month. They could have lasted this long if they'd stretched things. I know it's them. Oh, they must be starving. We've got to help them. No. And they're our neighbors. We never so much as spoke to them until we built our shelters. But they're human beings. Ed, I'm warning you. Stay away from that door. Ed, my! Anne, put that rifle down. You're frightening the children. If you open that door, Ed Johnson, I swear I'll shoot you. And try to be reasonable. I am being reasonable. You can't build a shelter to protect your family from radiation and then throw it open to a total stranger. Bill Bigler is not a total stranger. He is if he's contaminated with radiation poisoning. And all I plan to do is put some food and water in the airlock. I'll open the outer door and lock the inner one. No. He, he can't get inside with the inner door locked. No, but the radiation can. You told me that. Not that much. Enough. You know that. Enough to hurt the children. But, Anne, those people are starving to death. Well, let them starve. Anne. Alice Bigler laughed when I told her we stockpiled enough food and water for six months. Well, let her laugh now. Anne, this is insanity. I mean what I say, Ed. Anne, Mommy, please don't. Anne, you're frightening the children. Please put the gun down. Please, Mom. Why did the lights go out? Mark, go get the flashlight. Well, well, what happened, Dad? We've just run out of fuel, that's all. Will we be all right, Dad? Yes, yes, nothing's wrong. I'll take care of it. It's time to go to bed anyway. Everybody undress and hop into bed. Uh, What about the man outside? Don't worry, he can't get in. I won't let him hurt you. I'm scared. (laughs) Daddy, I'm scared. Don't be, Mary. It's all right, honey. He's still at it. Yes, but he's getting weaker. What's he doing out there? It sounds like he's trying to pry the door open. Depending on how long he's been out there, he must be pretty sick. He's probably leaning against the door, vomiting. Oh, Ed, please. I'm sorry. Are the children asleep? Yes, finally. What are we going to do? I don't know. Ed, couldn't we please try and run for it? And the most distance we could cover would be 20, 30 miles. In places, the ashes would be hip deep, maybe higher. In the end, we'd we'd wind up like him. There just wouldn't be any point in it. Couldn't we try and open the air vents? No, it's still too radioactive for that. We we might just as well open the door. Oh, why has it stayed so hot for so long? The brochures, everything said you'd be able to... Leave at the end of three months, four at the most. Now, what went wrong? If I knew, Anne, I... we wouldn't be here. So many things can go wrong that you never count on. Maybe we were just too close to the blast. I don't know. How much air do you think we have left? An hour. Maybe less. What'll happen then? The oxygen in the room will be gone, and we'll start breathing our own carbon dioxide. Will it be bad? I don't know. If you're asleep, it shouldn't be bad. Certainly not as bad as being out there. Do you think we'd stay asleep through it? I was just wondering about that. If we took sleeping pills? Yes, then I think so. Well, then that's the way I want us to go, Ed. Asleep. And all of us together. That's what I was thinking, too. I'll have to wake the children. What for? To give them a pill. I don't want either of them to wake up trying to breathe. All right, dear, but hurry. Time's running out. I'll put some food and water in the airlock. But why? You said it wouldn't do him any good. I know, I know. But maybe it'd be nice if just once before he dies, he knows the world isn't completely devoid of human beings. Hurry, Anne, the air's getting bad. Mary, Mark. Wake up, Mark. Hmm. I want you to take these. Is it time to get up yet? No, darling. Just drink this and go back to sleep. 
Tell me when it's time to get up. I will. Mary, Mary. Uh, what? Mother wants you to take these. What for? To help you sleep. I don't want any. Oh, but, Mary, they're good for you. I don't want any. Ed, Ed, I... Oh, it's I, all right. Uh, here, give them to me. Mary, you have to take your pills, honey. We're all taking them, see? I'm taking mine. And Mommy's going to take hers. Well, what are they? Well, they're just sleeping pills so we can all go to sleep together. Will we wake up together? Yes, if... If we wake up, we'll all wake up the way we went to sleep, together. Oh, I want some pills, too. Here you are, honey. Mm. Oh, good night, Mommy. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Mary. I don't want to cry. It's all right, dear. I love them both so much. I know. I love them, too. I love you all. Everything. So much. I love you, darling. I'm sorry I couldn't make it work. I tried. I tried very hard. I know. We all tried. It's not your fault. It was just a house of cards, that's all. It couldn't work. I love you, Anne. Just hold me, dear. Try to sleep. I love you all. Very much. I love you, too. Just hold me. in here. Pick up children first. Take the woman's pulse, Greg. She got too hysterical near the end. Do we have their stomachs pumped, Doctor? No, they took only one sleeping pill apiece. That much will just help them sleep the whole thing off. Be careful with those children there. Would you say the experiment was a success? Yeah. A family of four in a nine by twelve fallout shelter for nine months? Yes, I'd say they did pretty well. But they lost touch with reality toward the end. You probably would have, too, if your only contact with reality was a radio. And suddenly that was taken away from you. But they really thought they were survivors in a fallout shelter. The last people left alive on Earth. Greg, that was the purpose of the experiment. To change the variables until you find the breaking point. Anybody can survive when everything's running smoothly. But break their communication, disrupt their fuel supply, threaten them with the unknown from without... They did pretty well. For two months, they wouldn't mention to each other that they were losing fuel. Neither one would mention it, for fear of frightening the others. They did pretty well. Then the experiment was a success. No, the experiment wasn't a success, but the people were. As long as people have to hide under the ground, all experiments are failures. But maybe we can learn how to protect the people so they can outlive the failures of experimenters. Watch that stretcher there. Be as gentle as you can. That's a human being you're carrying. Theater 5 has presented A House of Cards, written by George Bamber and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Vicki Bola, George Petrie, Bryna Rayburn, Cecil Roy, and Guy Sorrell. Audio engineers Bill Sandreuter and Marty Folia. Sound technicians Ed Blaney and M.C. Brock. Original music by Alexander Vlastatsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. <laughs> <laughs>